Hello everyone, before we start this one hell of a ram pack video, I did notice that 63% of the viewers on this channel aren't actually subscribed. So instead of just saying, oh you should subscribe, I thought I would give myself 15 seconds to tell you exactly why you should. 3, 2, 1, go. We do classic Doctor Who reviews on the channel every week, so if that's your scene, that's great stuff. We do occasional Doctor Who YouTube poops. I have a series where me and my mate react to Doctor Who episodes whilst being drunk. We do discussions, the latest filming production news, list rankings and more. Oh, that was 15 seconds. That's great. Anyway, I will stop rambling. Please subscribe um, if you haven't already and enjoy the video. and welcome to the complete history of the Doctor, a video which details a basic look into the long, extravagant life of the Time Lord known as the Doctor. From beginning as a foundling standing outside the boundary, all the way to the incarnation currently portrayed by Jodie Whittaker and even beyond that. This video aims to sort of explore the life of the Doctor and explain all the bits maybe people don't understand or maybe don't work, to try and create a timeline which works canonically for everyone to enjoy. The main source for today's video will of course be the TV show. I'll take some elements from Big Finish and other extended material here and there, but I'm not going to use it as my main go-to, as if I tried to list everything in continuity, I'd be here for years and have hundreds of contradictions. Anyway, without any further ado, let's begin. This era of the Doctor we're going to be calling The Foundling. The character will be called The Foundling and referred to as The Foundling, with different incarnation numbers being called The Foundling. This is just to make things a lot easier when we get to the Doctor we know as William Hartnell uh, being called The First Doctor. Doctor, because if then I call him like the 20th Doctor or something, people will get furious, myself included. So we're going to be referring to this era of the Doctor as the Foundling, with each incarnation having their own number. So this is the first Foundling. A Shaboggan explorer from Gallifrey called Tektiyun finds a planet with a gateway called the Boundary, which leads to presumably an alternate dimension or universe, or, you know, maybe just a different point in space. There was a child deposited at the bottom of the Boundary, alone abandoned in rags. Tektion adopted the child, and they explored some of the universe together before eventually returning back to Gallifrey, where Tektion would do tests on the child to try and work out their origin and how they worked. Sometime soon, the child, whilst playing with a friend on top of one of Gallifrey's large mountain ridges, fell from a great height, landing on the ground, dying tragically and horribly, but regenerating. For the first time ever in history, a regeneration turning into their second incarnation. The second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth foundling incarnations were all used as test subjects for Tektion to understand the power of regeneration. We don't know what the character got up to in this sort of era, but we can only presume it was more of a test subject type thing. However, by the time we got to the seventh foundling, Tektion had actually discovered the power of regeneration and would use it on herself, which is where we move on to ancient Gallifrey. We're gonna be talking about Gallifrey a little bit at this time because you know, we need to connect it to other events that are going on in history, and I thought it would be quite important to talk about it. So Texion actually finds the secret power of regeneration and uses the sort of effect on herself, turning herself into a new incarnation, and there you go. The Shabogans became more powerful and knowledgeable, a grand citadel was built, and beings called Rassilon, Omega, and the Other were responsible for the reproduction of time travel and regeneration. There's been such rumours since to suggest that Tektion is actually the other. It does line up and it does make sense. But you can make your own decisions based off that. That comes from a script extract from Doctor Who, not specifically the show itself. That may get confirmed next series, but we don't know. So currently we know there are three founding fathers and we presume that Tektion is actually the other. Tektion proposes that the Citadel members could only regenerate 12 times, allowing them to live an extended and long life, but not be immortal, not live forever, because that is just wrong. The ability should be passed down through descendants and there we go. The Time Lords, as we know them, are born. The Seventh Foundling. The child, now a bit older, signed up for the agency called the Division. The Division is ran by a certain type of Time Lord. The people in the Division serve Gallifrey and have permission to interfere with some events in history, but for the greater good. The child had excellent results and was quickly accepted onto the scheme. He joins the Division under a Gallifreyan called Gat. The Seven Plus X <laughs> foundling. This is where things get a little bit complicated. The foundling has at least one more regeneration following the seventh incarnation. However, since the foundling can regenerate an infinite number of times and we don't explicitly see a regeneration on screen, it's impossible to tell how many incarnations came between the seventh foundling and the incarnation portrayed by Joe Martin. 
who we're now going to refer to as the Incarnation 7 plus X. Between Incarnation 7 and 7 plus X, the child adopts the name the Doctor. However, we're not going to be calling these incarnations the Doctor yet, because again, it does confuse things later. So yes, they called themselves the Doctor, but for me, in this video, they are still the Foundling Incarnations. This incarnation of the Doctor decides that she no longer wants to serve, and instead tries to escape with a close friend as an ally. The two land on the distant planet of Earth, and the Doctor uses the Chameleon Arc to wipe her mind and turn her into a human called Ruth. The ally, who served Gallifrey, takes the name of Lee, and also blends in, hiding his biology, but choosing not to lose his memory so he can protect Ruth, or the Doctor. The Time Lords and Gat spot that the Doctor had left her post and tried to hide, so they partner with the Jadoon to try and track down the fugitive and bring them home. Lee gets found by the Jadoon and is killed by Gat, however the Doctor gets her memories back before having a confrontation with the Jadoon, allowing Gat to die horribly and then leaving to see the universe. Gat is established to be a Gallifreyan and was once referred to as a Time Lord, so it could be either. This leads me to either believe that she either couldn't regenerate and was just a Gallifreyan, hence why she died so suddenly, or we can assume that this was the final incarnation of the Time Lord known as Gat. There are various incarnations of the Doctor, or the founding era of the Doctor, that we know of, that we've seen on screen before, um, but only in significant still images and we don't really know anything about. They could take place before Ruth, they could take place after Ruth, but we know they are played in order by Christopher Barry, Robert Banks Stewart, Christopher Baker, Philip Hinchcliffe, Douglas Camfield, Graham Harper, Robert Holmes, and George Galicio. These would later be referred to as the Morbius Doctors. The Final Foundling. This is where things get a little bit more complicated. This incarnation of the Doctor could be, again, one after the 7 plus X that we know as Ruth, or it could be any number of regenerations along from that. We know that this version is the one to finally retire from the Division. However, he is brought into a chamber by the Time Lords, specifically Tectian or Omega or Rassilon, and as far as we are aware, the Doctor's mind is then wiped. He is reverted to a child and has the ability of unlimited regeneration snatched from him, being replaced by the standard 12 maximum in a cycle. Now, we don't know if that's 100%, but it makes sense to sort of classify that now as sort of head canon, so we can move on and everything else in the timeline makes sense from here on in. It's unclear what kind of device did this to the Doctor. However, I would assume that it's probably the Chameleon Arc. From the entire history of the show, we know the device known as the Chameleon Arc can turn someone into a child or keep someone the same age. We know it can rewrite their biology and we know it can either keep or remove memories. All these different variants put together could be sort of a specific thing. Different switches that enable different features of the Chameleon Arc. And I believe the Chameleon Arc here was used to revert the Doctor to a child in a new incarnation, totally remove the memory, but not rewrite the biology to a human, just keep Time Lord. Now let's talk about the first Doctor. I'm calling these incarnations the Doctor because that is the name they sort of go by. Although this character called himself the Doctor way earlier on when he was in the Ruth incarnation and beyond and through the Morbius incarnations, all that sort of thing, even though he called himself the Doctor back then, it's very easy to be able to separate it and go, when I'm saying they're the Doctor, I'm meaning they're the Doctor post-Division era of the character. Meaning that when I say the first Doctor, I mean the first Doctor post the Division era, post the mind wipe, post being turned back into a child to live life as a normal, regular Time Lord. Hopefully that makes sense and doesn't confuse too many people. Anyway, back to reality. This version of the Doctor grows up on Gallifrey, making friends with the Master at the Academy. They are sent for initiation with the Untempered Schism. The Master and the Doctor make friends almost straight away, both being tutored under a Time Lord called Barusa. This incarnation of the Doctor became a Time Lord and had a child with another Gallifreyan inhabitant. Their child also had a child who would later become very close with the Doctor as grandfather and granddaughter. The granddaughter, unlike the Doctor, could not regenerate as she was Gallifreyan and not a Time Lord. At some point, the Doctor and his granddaughter steal a faulty TARDIS and end up in 1963, where trying to hide from their own race, they blend in with the granddaughter attending Coal Hill School and adopting the name Susan Foreman after the scrapyard they landed in called I.M. Foreman. The TARDIS 
we're going to take a bit of a sidestep here from talking about the Doctor to talk about the TARDIS itself. The reason we're doing that is because there is a slight contradiction in terms of canon that a lot of people don't really understand, and it's the one thing that kind of marks out as not really making much sense. So I thought, well, I'd, I'd, I'd break it down, I'd talk about it, and maybe offer some sort of a theory or solution to this problem. The problem, of course, is that Joe Martin's foundling 7 Plus X incarnation had a TARDIS, but not just any TARDIS, a TARDIS with a broken chameleon circuit disguised as a 60s police box, which we know came from 1963 when the first Doctor landed and the chameleon circuit broke. However, here is my theory as to why this still could possibly work. The Doctor's original TARDIS, when they were in the family incarnations, at some point broke its chameleon circuit. We know this because the Ruth Doctor's TARDIS is actually disguised as a police box, and doesn't change shape no matter where it travels. It's a strange fact considering that it only seems to happen to the Doctor and no one else. None of the Masters, uh, Rani's, um, meddling monks, or any other Time Lords TARDISes that we've seen in the show have had its chameleon circuit broke just accidentally on a whim, other than of course the Hellbent one, but that's more of just a bit of a wink and nudge. Other than that, it's sort of a rarity for that to happen to a TARDIS. It's sort of a, a mistake that isn't too common. So I'd actually go as far to say that Ruth's TARDIS and Hartnell's TARDIS are the same TARDIS. After the Doctor retired from the Division in the final Foundling incarnation, let's say their TARDIS was taken from them. Why would they need a TARDIS if they're being turned back into a child? It was a broken TARDIS with a broken chameleon circuit, so it was sent to the repair shop where it had the TARDIS sort of 60s blue box model totally wiped and replaced with a standard cylindrical thing, ready to be fixed, but it was still broken, hence why it was in the repair shop. We know the first Doctor does actually steal his TARDIS from the repair shop, so this does actually work. Let's say he's somewhat willed into stealing the same TARDIS, which still hadn't had its chameleon circuit fixed. Then I would suggest that the TARDIS, which we know is sentient and has its own thoughts even if it can't talk, it's a living sort of creature, we know how it works. And I would like to suggest that the TARDIS actually enjoyed looking like the blue 60s police box. So I'd say that it purposefully took the Doctor back to 1963 so it can get stuck as a police box again. After all, the first Doctor does actually say the following in An Unearthly Child. I tolerate this century, but I don't enjoy it. Which I suppose doesn't really mean anything, but it could be interpreted that it wasn't actually his choice to travel back to 1963. It's just a theory, but it holds if you want to try and make sense of things, which I personally do, so in my terms of headcanon, that's the way I look at it. Maybe this TARDIS just loves the blue box aesthetic as much as the rest of us do. It could also be an excuse as well for how the TARDIS does change its exterior into different police boxes. It's never changing to something else, it's always just the police box, and that could very easily lean into it. The TARDIS is sentient, the TARDIS is fully aware of what it's doing, and maybe it just enjoyed the aesthetic. Anyway, back to the Doctor. He travels with various companions, Barbara, Ian, Vicky, Stephen, Katerina, Sarah, Dodo, Polly, Ben, and of course, his granddaughter Susan, whom he left in the 22nd century. The Doctor, quite early on in his life, encounters a species called the Daleks, a deadly race of killing machines with small mutated creatures inside. These would go on to reappear various times in the Doctor's life, even leading to a war, but we'll get to that. Eventually, the Doctor, Ben and Polly confronted the Cybermen on the South Pole in 1986. After the first Doctor spends a little bit of time with one of his future incarnations, also on the verge of regeneration, the Doctor has his first regeneration post the Division era of the character, of course, and we say goodbye to William Hartnell as the Doctor. The second incarnation post Division era was played by Patrick Troughton. He has various companions, Ben, Polly, Jamie, Victoria and Zoe. This incarnation also encounters the Daleks, the Cybermen, the Ice Warriors and more various times across his era along with the Great Intelligence. Eventually, the Doctor and friends encounter a member of the Doctor's race, a Time Lord who is posing as a War Chief. The War Chief is helping an alien race pick out soldiers from different points in time, making them fight and keeping the best of the best to be used in their own conflicts. The Doctor, in need of some help to send the soldiers back to their own time zones, summons the Time Lords for the first time since he fled the planet, stealing a TARDIS in his first post-vision incarnation. The Time Lords appear, forcing the Doctor's companions to have their minds wiped and sent back to their own time zones. The Doctor is forced into regeneration and is exiled on Earth by the Time Lords. The third post division Doctor was played by John Pertwee. This incarnation of the Doctor teamed with Unit and the Brigadier for many adventures, even encountering the Master for the first time since the Doctor departed from Gallifrey. Not 
including Big Finish, of course. The Master in his final incarnation, or one of his final incarnations, depending on how you look at it, was played by Roger Delgado. The Third Doctor had been exiled to Earth until he encountered one of Gallifrey's founding fathers. Omega. Omega had been shot into an antimatter dimension that was entirely controlled by him. He wanted the Doctor to replace him in the antimatter dimension so he could get back to Gallifrey in the main universe. However, this didn't really work because Omega had actually lost his physical form because he'd been there so long. With the help of his first and second incarnations post division, the Doctors managed to defeat Omega and return to their own universe and time zones. As a reward for this mission, the Time Lords grant the Doctor the ability to time travel in the TARDIS again. This incarnation's companions include Liz Shaw, Joe Grant and Sarah Jane Smith. The end of this incarnation's life is marked by a journey to Metabolus 3, where the third Doctor gives over a crystal to the Great One, a giant spider who had humans trapped in her caves as well as Earth. The crystal reacts killing the Great One, but as the Doctor tries to escape he gets dealt a lethal dose of radiation from the cave. However, he does manage to get back to the TARDIS just in time where he regenerates on the floor of Unit HQ. The Fourth Doctor The fourth incarnation, Post Division, was played by Tom Baker. This incarnation would travel with various companions, Sarah Jane, Harry, Leela, K9, Romana, One and Two, Adric, Tegan and Nyssa. This incarnation of the Doctor was given a task from the Time Lords, who had sent him to early Scarrow to stop the creation of the Daleks, as the Time Lords had foreseen that the Daleks would wipe out all other life in the universe. This allows the Doctor to meet the creator of the Daleks, Terry Nit, I mean Davros, an evil scientist who goes on to create the Daleks and control them throughout the Doctor's life until he dies in the Time War. But We'll get to that. Davros was deformed due to a file attack on his laboratory when he was younger, making him lose his left arm, taste buds and lower half of his body, as well as leaving his eyes severely damaged that even using them would be immensely painful. This left him bound to a life support system which would eventually become the template for the skirt of the Dalek bodies. This doctor also encountered the Master on Gallifrey, in a decayed state as he had reached the maximum capacity of regenerations that the Time Lords allowed, so had regenerated as such into a skeletal-like figure. This incarnation of the Master would escape and meet with the Doctor again on Traken, taking the body of Tremus. This new body will be portrayed by Anthony Ainley, who would escape to torment the Doctor again on Earth, Agopolis, and eventually the Pharos Project, where this incarnation of the Doctor would fall to the ground, joining with a being called the Watcher, an all-white creature said to be a version of the Doctor that he sees when he's approaching his incarnation's final days, and there and then he regenerates into his next incarnation. The Fifth Doctor The fifth incarnation of the Doctor post-division was portrayed by Peter Davison. This Doctor travelled with Adric, Nyssa, Tegan, Turlo, Chameleon and Perry. This incarnation of the Doctor was involved with the Games of Rassilon, by which the first five incarnations post-division, along with some companions, were picked out by the Time Lords and dropped onto Gallifrey in the Death Zone. This encounter results in Barusa, the Master and Doctor's former tutor, who is now Lord President, seeking immortality from the Tomb of Rassilon and finding himself being sealed permanently in stone for the rest of time. The High Council then makes the Doctor the Lord President of Gallifrey, which ends up of course in him fleeing in the TARDIS. This incarnation of the Doctor ended up on Androzani Minor, where he and his companion were dealt a lethal dose of Spectros. The Doctor used the milk of a Queen Bat to save Perry's life, but he did not recover enough to save himself. Dying and regenerating on the floor of the TARDIS, the Master tried to intervene, encouraging this incarnation to cancel his regeneration and die. However, the Doctor powered through, regenerating into his sixth incarnation. The sixth incarnation of the Doctor was played by Colin Baker. He travelled with companions Perry, Mel, Frobisher and many other companions depending on what you as an audience seek out as canon or not. He travelled on various adventures meeting another Time Lord or Time Lady called the Rani. She was another Time Lord the Doctor knew as a child but not as closely as the Master. She is somewhat of a renegade with her own TARDIS and would torment the Doctor through the coming years of his life. The Doctor eventually ended up back on Gallifrey where he was put on trial. Soon after this ordeal, the sixth incarnation regenerated. However, the reasoning behind said regeneration is still unknown. Some believe he fell off his exercise bicycle, smacking his head off the console and dying. Some sources suggest that this version of the Doctor was hit by radiation beams from Lacertia that happened to be fatal towards Time Lords. Either way, the TARDIS landed on Lacertia and the sixth Doctor regenerated into the next incarnation. 
The seventh incarnation of the Doctor was played by Sylvester McCoy. He travelled with various companions, including Mel and Ace. The Doctor encountered the Rani again for one of the last times before parting ways as the Doctor explores his new incarnation. After various adventures, the Doctor ends up encountering the end of the Dalek Civil War, causing it somewhat by disposing of the Imperials after letting them wipe out the Renegade Squadron in 1963 Earth. Yet another one of his final meetings with the Master took place in an encounter with the Cheetah World and its people, leaving the Master trapped on an exploding planet. However, the Master obviously would eventually escape, getting caught trying to destroy the Daleks where he would be placed on trial and end up as an entity on the Doctor's TARDIS. Before this though, the Doctor had a final encounter with the Rani on the streets of Albert Square, mixing between the different incarnations of himself, eventually saving the day and himself with the help of K9. After many years of travelling, some of which by himself, the case of ashes which contained the Master's consciousness broke, letting the consciousness of the Master out to interfere with the TARDIS on its way to Gallifrey. This forces the Doctor to stop in an emergency landing in San Francisco in 1999, where he leads the TARDIS amidst a gang fight where he is shot dead. He later regenerates in a morgue elsewhere in the city. The eighth incarnation of the Doctor was played by Paul McGann. This incarnation, after being operated on, started the post-regeneration process with some side effects, notably amnesia. The Master had hijacked a new body and had opened the Eye of Harmony, causing the Doctor's memories to flood back in a process which scared his new friend, Grace Holloway. Later on, after much story business, the Master tries to unsuccessfully steal the Doctor's remaining lives. The Master got stuck in the Eye of Harmony and supposedly died, however, we will get to that later. The eighth Doctor had many more adventures with companions Charlie, Carers, Lucy, Tamsi, Molly and more, again, depending on what you personally include as canon. Just a quick side note, away from the whole history part, Doctor Who's canon, to make things easier for this video, is subjective. Everything established in the TV show and live action can be considered canon. However, Big Finish audios, comics, novels, etc. can also be included as canon if you wish, hence why I leave the option open for Doctors such as the 6th, 7th and 8th Doctor, as they all have key prominent Big Finish stories that fans absolutely love. However, if we detailed them, we would be here all day and there would be a few contradictions, and I wanted to try and make this long 40 minute video as easy to watch as possible. This incarnation died as the time war raged on, refusing to save himself by stepping into his TARDIS as he tried to save a pilot from a crashing ship towards Khan. He used his final remaining minutes to choose his next incarnation via potions created by the Sisterhood of Khan to turn him into a warrior, a warrior who could fight in the time war, someone who was no longer the Doctor. He regenerated. The next incarnation of the Doctor never called himself the Doctor, in fact he never really gave himself a name, however he went by various names, the Warrior, the Doctor of War, the Renegade, but mainly the War Doctor. This incarnation was played by the late great John Hurt. Most of the War Doctor stories happened off screen. If you include Big Finish, then you'll open yourself up to a full character arc for this Doctor, seeing him throughout the Time War, meeting many people along the way. During the Time War, the Master was resurrected and played through two separate incarnations before we see him again on screen. One predominantly played by Alex McQueen as the Bald Incarnation, and the other appearing in the comics as a small child, before regenerating into the War Incarnation of the Master, portrayed by Derek Jacobi. This incarnation will be talked about in great detail at a later date. During this time, Davros's ship also apparently flew into the jaws of the Nightmare Child. The Doctor tried to save him, but was unsuccessful. However, someone was but we'll get back to that. Eventually, the Doctor would end up uncovering a plan from Rassilon, an ancient Time Lord who we previously mentioned, who was resurrected to try and win the Time War. The plan was to rip apart time itself and ascend into creatures of consciousness alone. The War Doctor then took it upon himself to end the war, proclaiming, no more, stealing the moment and heading towards the barn. The barn was a place where the Doctor slept as a child when he wanted time away from the other boys, usually to cry. It clearly was a meaningful place to head, as well as being as far away from the TARDIS as possible in the dry lands of Gallifrey. He had an encounter with two future incarnations of himself, which would lead him to not activating the moment and instead saving Gallifrey in a pocket universe, allowing the Daleks to fire at each other and mostly, mostly, wiping each other out. Besides, of course, a few select ships which were left spiralling through time, one of which being helmed by the Emperor Dalek. The Doctor would claim his original name back before starting to regenerate in the TARDIS, knowing he wouldn't be able to recall the memory of saving Gallifrey, and instead would be left under the impression that he'd destroyed all Daleks and Time Lords alike. The ninth incarnation of the Doctor was portrayed by Christopher Eccleston. He woke up with no memory of saving Gallifrey, and according to several stories, he smashed every mirror in the TARDIS so he couldn't see himself. He wasn't quite ready to face himself yet. 
He later went through different time periods to try and save as many people as he could to make up for the casualties of the Time War, including events such as the Titanic, Krakatoa's eruption, and even appearing in different time zones across history, notably Dallas to see Kennedy's assassination. Eventually he'd stumble on an alert towards a nesting invasion on Earth in 2005. This is where he would meet Rose, and you kind of know the rest. Various adventures with companions Rose, Adam, and Jack Harkness. Eventually, the Doctor would stumble upon a lone Dalek that survived the Time War in the archive of Henry Van Staten in 2012. This Dalek, after realising it had no purpose, and after mixing the human DNA from Rose's imprint, it decides to kill itself, leaving the Doctor to believe the Daleks are permanently extinct. This is until he encounters a new fleet of Daleks several hundred years into the future in Satellite 5. The Emperor Dalek had been controlling humanity for years, picking off the weak and using their DNA to create Dalek warriors. This Dalek fleet came to an end when his companion Rose looked into the heart of the TARDIS, allowing her to control the atoms of everything, wiping out the Daleks for good, or so we thought. She even used her power to bring Captain Jack back to life after he had died. Unfortunately, she ended up making him immortal, opposed to just alive again. The Doctor saves Rose by absorbing the time energy from her and letting him take the fall instead, regenerating into his next incarnation in front of her as the TARDIS was in flight. The tenth incarnation of the Doctor was played by David Tennant. He travelled with companions Rose, Mickey, Martha, Jack, Donna and technically Wilf. This version encountered the Cybermen for the first time since the Time War and once again the Daleks, specifically the Cult of Scarrow, a squadron of four Daleks above the Emperor himself who escaped the universe when they knew the Daleks wouldn't win the Time War. They escaped using a void ship to hide in the void the four Daleks and the Genesis Ark. The Genesis Ark was a bit of Time Lord technology that sealed hundreds and hundreds upon thousands and maybe millions of Daleks inside it. Bigger on the inside prison, if you will. These Daleks would open the Genesis Ark when confronting the Cybermen in 2007. However, most of these would be sucked into the Void by the Doctor and Rose. The four Cult of Scarrow members, however, would emergency temporal shift back to New York in 1930. Rose was lost to a parallel universe at this point, saying a final goodbye to the Doctor at Bad Wolf Bay, or so she thought. The Doctor then joins hands with Martha, a new companion who saved his life when they first met, and someone the Doctor owed a debt to. They went on various adventures, meeting the Weeping Angels, the Family of Blood, and the Daleks, yet again, three of which died in New York due to complications. Dalek Khan escaped again with an emergency temporal shift, sending him back into the Time War and sending him insane, but allowing him to save Davros and bring him back to the universe in the modern day. The Doctor, Martha and Jack Harkness, who had now joined sides with them after being with Torchwood for a bit, also encountered the Master, the War Master specifically, who had used a chameleon arc to turn himself into a human. Specifically, if you count the War Master audio stories, his use of the Heavenly Paradigm turned the Time War into an even worse place, scarring him, terrifying him, and sending him to the coast of the Silver Devastation towards the end of the universe. He used a chameleon arc to turn himself human, but also revert himself into a child. He would grow up to be a professor and pitch the Utopia Project, which would allow the human race to survive. However, this plot was an idea by the Master, where he would attempt to use humans as an army of cyborg drones to wipe out the human race. The Master uncovers the watch, revealing his identity and escaping, but before he can, he's shot by Chan Tho, a creature he'd worked very closely with as the Professor. This causes him to regenerate from his war incarnation into a fresh face portrayed by John Sim. This Master would try out his plan in the modern day, before of course he's eventually thwarted by the Doctor and Martha. He's shot dead by his wife Lucy and refused to regenerate, dying and being burned by the Doctor. Whilst he was burning, his ring fell off and dropped on the floor, which was obtained by Miss Trefusis to be later used in his resurrection. However, again, we'll get to that. The Doctor parted ways with Martha and had met up again with Donna, a human who he met once before but parted ways with. However, now she'd changed, seeking out adventure a little bit more than she was before. They would go on various adventures together before ending up encountering the Daleks once again. This time they'd stolen Earth for a larger project. Davros had been saved and had resurrected the Dalek race. Rose returns through a dimension cannon, as does Torchwood, Sarah Jane, Martha and more. The Doctor gets shot by a Dalek and starts to regenerate. The 10.5th Doctor. This incarnation of the Doctor is also portrayed by David Tennant, continuing the story of his previous incarnation. That incarnation keeps the same face because he pours the regeneration energy into a hand which was chopped off in a fight with the Sycorax very early in the 10th Doctor's incarnation. 
This creates a meta crisis. The new doctor grows out of the hand and his companion Donna gets the doctor's brain. She ends up saving the day, wiping out the Daleks and such before the doctor gets everyone home, leaving the meta crisis incarnation with Rose in a parallel version of Earth. Davros presumably emergency temporal shifts back to Scarrow at this time, damaged and injured from the crucible falling apart. Donna has her mind wiped to save her life and the Doctor goes to travel alone for a bit. He encounters the Master one last time, somewhat revived from the worshippers of Harold Saxon but not fully restored, being a creature that faded in and out of reality of sorts, needing to eat lots and lots of food all the time to operate himself. The Master then uses a machine from Joshua Naismith to spread his genetic imprint across the human race, turning every human human into the Master. The Doctor narrowly escapes before realising the Master was part of a bigger picture. The Time Lords are returning. As previously mentioned, the end of the Time War led to Rassilon trying to rip apart time to become creatures of consciousness alone. This is again stopped by the Doctor sending the Time Lords back into the Time War where Gallifrey belonged. The Master joins them in this, fighting Rassilon in the process and getting teleported back to Gallifrey, presumably causing Rassilon to regenerate. The Doctor gets poisoned with radiation after saving Wilf from certain death and this causes him to regenerate. But due to him holding off his regeneration for a long period of time, by the time he does start regenerating, the power is so intense that it destroys his current interior of the TARDIS and leaves him crashing towards Earth. The Other Doctors, Part 1 the Metacrisis Doctor is previously described as a human incarnation of the Doctor who only has one life. The brain power of the Doctor, but again, only one lifespan. He is one of various alternate or extra Doctor incarnations that we'll talk about in this video, uh, the Watcher being another one of them, and another being the Valiant. He's also the Dream Lord, which sort of encounters the 11th Doctor very, very briefly. It's explained a lot in that episode, but basically he's just a darker version of the Doctor, similar to that of the Valyard, but he sort of has the ability to play about with dreams and realities and stuff. Um, but yeah, other versions of the Doctor in Doctor Who history will be brought up in due course towards the end of the video. The Eleventh Doctor. Right, so uh, where were we? The TARDIS is crashing to Earth and the Doctor is freshly regenerated into his newest incarnation. That would be the thirteenth incarnation post-Division era, the last in his current regeneration cycle. However, he's usually referred to as the Eleventh Doctor just to make things a little bit easier, played by Matt Smith. This Doctor travels with various companions, Amy, Rory, Riversong, Clara and Handles. Riversong is a character we hadn't mentioned previously, supposedly she'd met most of the Doctor's incarnations but so Socialised predominantly with the 11th Doctor, even marrying him. Her timeline is complicated so we're not going to get into it too much, but she exists, she's there, it's maybe a project for another time. This Doctor found himself bringing together all of his post-division incarnations to save Gallifrey from the Time War, as previously mentioned, locking it in a pocket universe. The Doctor would later find himself on Trenzalore where he would encounter a crack in the universe. On the other side, the Time Lords await the Doctor's real name to come through the crack and bring Gallifrey back into the main universe. But what they don't know is that many species of aliens and warships are standing above the planet of Trenzalore, waiting ready to commence the second Time War. So the Doctor sat and waited for hundreds and hundreds of years, guarding the crack for the last years of his life in his first Grant of Regeneration cycle. The Time Lords at this point gave in with their quest to return instead granting the Doctor a new cycle of regenerations and allowing a large chunk of the Dalek slash alien forces to be wiped out. The Doctor restores to his younger self before regenerating into the next incarnation of the character. The Twelfth Doctor was played by Peter Capaldi. He travelled with Clara, Bill and Nardole. He had various adventures and at one point encountering the Master again, this time in a new incarnation played by Michelle Gomez. This incarnation is similar to that of the issue we had with the Ruth Doctor foundling incarnation that we talked about previously, in the sense that we don't know if she's the next master along from the incarnation we saw played by John Sim, or whether she's any number of incarnations down the line. The new master regeneration cycle started with Alex McQueen, the child, Derek Jacobi, John Sim, meaning Gomez could be the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th or 13th incarnation of the master in this regeneration cycle, as we don't explicitly see a regeneration on screen from Sim. The Twelfth Doctor says his final goodbyes to Riversong and Clara. Davros appears again before maybe dying again? Who knows? The Doctor has a brief encounter on Gallifrey hidden in its pocket universe with Rassilon once again, this time expelling him from the planet, all with the help of the many many Gallifreyan and Time Lord soldiers that fought with him in the Time War. The Doctor ends up being convinced that his lifelong frenemy Missy had turned good, and the Doctor allows her to take control of a situation which obviously went horribly wrong, leading the Doctor to intervene, but not quick enough 
to save his companion from being shot. Bill is taken away by some mysterious patients and over the span of 10 years, but for mere minutes for the Doctor, Bill is turned into a Cyberman. Missy then meets the Master? and the Doctor tries to escape as best he can while saving as many people as possible. It results in him exploding a floor of the colony ship, wiping out as many Cybermen as he could. The Twelfth Doctor had been shot by a Cyberman, electrocuted by a Cyberman, and even blown up by his own hand. But he powered through, not wanting to regenerate and turn into another face yet again. He was tired of changing and starting again. And then he met the First Doctor, who, having one adventure with, changed his mind. Decided it was best and regenerated in his TARDIS alone. Once again, similar to the 10th incarnation, holding back the regeneration energy for so long that when he did eventually regenerate, it blew up the interior. The 13th Doctor, the 15th incarnation post-Division, and the 32nd known incarnation of the character as a whole. She is played by Jodie Whittaker. This incarnation of the Doctor would travel with Graham, Yaz and Ryan. She would fight off Zimshaw of the Stenza and a lone Dalek on Earth all before facing off against the Master again. According to Sim's Master, Missy couldn't regenerate after taking the full blast of the laser screwdriver. Now, that could be him telling the truth or it could be him lying. We don't know, it is the Master after all, so we'll balance both sides. If we take that as face value and that is the end of the Master's life, dying there on the colony ship, then we can assume Sasha Dewan's incarnation comes between John Sim's incarnation and Missy's incarnation. If we don't take it as face value, then Sasha could very easily come after Gomez. People don't really like this idea as it does kind of crap on the character redemption, but to me, either option actually works. This version of the Master post-regeneration headed back to Gallifrey for fun, to mess about, cause mayhem if you will, even jumping into the Matrix to see what he could find. However, what he did find hit him to his core. The secret of the Timeless Child, how Gallifrey society was founded on a lie. Rassilon, Omega and the other were never gods, they were just people. People who abused a child for their power to pass through generations. However, to top it off, this child was the lifelong friend of the Master, the Doctor. She was the Timeless Child and something that the Master craved, life, everlasting life, the ability to live longer with regeneration, was something given by the Doctor. It was because of the Doctor that the Master is how he is, and that broke him to his core. Whether you have the redemption arc or not, that would destroy anyone, especially someone with the mentality of the Master. He decided to take out this newfound knowledge on Gallifrey by destroying it, killing as many people as he could, presumably using the weapons of mass destruction from the Omega arsenal, maybe even the moment itself. And then he went to confront the Doctor. The Doctor met with the 7 plus X foundling incarnation, confusing her as it would, you know, finding a new incarnation of yourself that you didn't know existed, before eventually confronting the Master on Gallifrey amidst the Cyber War. The Master locked the Doctor in the Matrix where she found out the truth about herself and the Timeless Child. Meanwhile, the Master uses what's left of the Time Lord race to build a race of immortal Cybermen, all before being almost wiped out by the Death Particle and presumably escaping in a TARDIS because, well, it's the Master. The Doctor then gets locked away in a prison by the Jadoon where the Daleks Jack Harkness and eventually regenerates on her TARDIS. And there you go, that's everything I'm able to gather at the moment for the history of the Doctor, other than, well, the 13 plus wife incarnation known more commonly of course as the Curator, a version of the Doctor from years down the line portrayed by Tom Baker. Why represents the number of incarnations of the Doctor between 13 and the Curator, as it could be many, many incarnations on from the 13th Doctor, or it could just be the one right after, we don't know yet. The Curator retires from seeing the universe and instead curating a painting called Gallifrey Falls in the National Gallery of London. And that actually is it. Uh, oh, no, wait, um, a few of you pr will probably mention this in the comments so let's just go through it. The other incarnations, Peter Cushing uh, actually played a version of the Doctor but not a real incarnation. In the universe of Doctor Who as a TV show, the Doctor is so well known that films were actually made of the Doctor's adventures where actor Peter Cushing would play the character of the Doctor. The Doctor and Peter Cushing were actually good friends, even letting Peter Cushing 
lend one of the Doctor's waistcoats for the second movie. So yes, the films exist, but no, Peter Cushing did not play a version of our Doctor. He played a version of Doctor in a film inside the universe of Doctor Who. Oh, and I presume you'll probably want to hear about the fatal death thing as well. So, the incarnations portrayed by Rowan Atkinson, Richard E. Grant, Jim Broadbent, Hugh Grant and Joanna Lumley, despite being made for the comic relief special Curse of Fatal Death, some people believe that the canonization of the pre-Hartnell Doctors allows these to be canon also. However, since this includes the Master, I would say it would have to be post-Hartnell, meaning it would, if canon have to take place after Jodie Whittaker's Doctor and before, presumably, the curator. And yes, the same goes for the Schalke Doctor. Richard E. Grant has two incarnations of the Doctor if you count all of this as canon, which would seem mental, but Tom Baker has also played two incarnations, as has David Tennant, as well as a Metacrisis incarnation. So it's not too abnormal. And obviously canon is subjective. Make what you will of all of the Doctors here. Um, the TV show is canon, any extended material, go for it. Anyway, that's all 40 known incarnations of the Doctor, canon or not, talked about today. No, we're not talking about Big Finish's Unbound Universe. I'm sure it's good, but I haven't got time to go through that, so that is that. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It was a bit of a big one, so if you wanted to help support more content like this, you know, myself, the channel, etc., then please, please consider supporting me on Patreon to get yourself some early access content, your name in all my descriptions, and access to an exclusive Patreon-only Discord server. And obviously, it just helps out the channel in general. I'm able to make better content for you guys, all that sort of thing. But that's totally optional. You can also support me by liking the video, sharing, commenting, and even subscribing if you haven't already with notifications on. And that's pretty much that. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It took a long time and, and I'm quite happy with how it's come together. So yeah, I really hope you did enjoy it. But anyway, that's that. Have a lovely day. I'll see you all later. Bye bye. Shit, forgot to cover the absorber off.